along in Houston and Mission Control, they were just asking if uh, the lens cap was still on the, uh, the TV camera. A view of the uh, Mesa and Ladder area on Antares. The voice you hear from Mission Control is that of the voice of Apollo, uh, John McLeish. Okay, it's about 50 feet, I'd say. Why don't we get all the uh, cable out while we're at it? And they're trying to uh, yeah, have a television in picture again in just a moment, it looks as if. Up. You can see on that screen, the uh, up there, being positioned your, about 50 feet out. From your upper uh, left-hand corner of your picture there of Mission Control, that's a display screen with which Mission Control watches the television pictures. And you can see there that uh, there is some color showing on the screen, and apparently they're adjusting the camera now. The television camera on the moon, of course, is not for the edification and amusement of those. The lens cap is off. We're Gus Lehman. Oh, what a picture. Aiming for the general area of uh, Pisa. Now, can you pull this rest of this cable out and away from the base of here? Yeah, we got about uh, 30 foot zoom under that look. Okay, I think you can uh, zoom in a little more. Let's try 40 here. Okay, and on the F stop, Al, we'd like to stop it down one additional stop. That's toward the higher numbers. That's uh, Al Shepard okay, adjusting the television camera. Two to 44, and I'll zoom it in to 40. Stand by. And that's Ed Mitchell we see uh, out there in by the uh, lunar module. Okay, hold the zoom there, and the uh, position looks good also. Yeah. Okay, how about the F-stop? It's uh, tremendously valuable to the scientists and the engineers on the ground. Uh, Al, this is Houston. See if you can stop it down a little more. Run it up, uh, run the diaphragm ring up against the stop there. It's still a little bright. It's hard to adjust the camera with that very bright uh, okay, sun. With no atmosphere there around the moon to interfere with the sun's rays. It gets up to 200 and 40 degrees on the moon at the uh, sun's zenith. Uh, Al, this is Houston. I request you go to peak control. This is where I like to vindicate myself from way back, but I was anticipating the day that I'd watch television on the moon. I was accused of not wanting television in space. Uh, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> he said bitterly. <laughs> the other thing is, I didn't know I was supposed to turn it on that day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can recall very vividly in a meeting now, now about 88 Alex years ago. Here. Anticipating the day that I'd be sitting watching the okay, central temperature in the moon. I'm confirming that I'm in peak and that I'm in an F-22. Well, uh, well Shepard 
was doing this. What uh, Mitchell has been doing in the background is gathering contingency samples. That is, he's going ahead and picking up uh, uh, rock samples from right around the uh, lunar module and soil samples. And while we're waiting for the uh, television adjustments, the uh, 230 position, approximately 50 feet where the camera is, is uh, slightly uphill. We see that the lamb did, in fact, land on uh, sort of a... Down slope. Al, this is Houston. Houston. Uh, almost the basin. Go ahead. Roger, Al, this is Houston. We'd like to go back to average and uh, F-44, stop it down all the way, and then we'll leave it there. Incidentally, for any of you viewers at home, okay, you're trying to take photographs of the lunar walks from your TV screen. Roger, and back to the new model. You're using color film with an ASA. At 80 to 160. We recommend using F stop of 2.8 to 4. To to and speed of 150 to the second. Repeat that. If it's color film, ASA 80 to 160. F stop of 2.8 to 4. And a speed of 150 okay, to the second. And the telescope black and white film with an ASA of 160 to 400. Use an F stop of 4 to 8 with a speed of 115 to the second. Good luck to you. as if they're skipping for joy. <laughs> and I suspect they are. Okay, Al was bringing the SBN antenna around. Roger, Al, we're watching. Yep, it's coming. It's really uh, moving towards us now. There isn't any wind on the moon, but there is a movement. Uh, well, maybe you can explain it to us a little more, what that solar wind experiment is that they, they pick up on this aluminum foil. Well, there are streams of particles always streaming out from the sun, and they're trying to pick up these particles as bits of the sun now itself. setting up the erectable S-band antenna. It's a wind. It'll push you. Uh, and that is, if you set a big sail in space, it, it will push. It will? Yes. Very right. slowly, but yeah. very surely. I recall uh, being in a long discussion with Dr. Von Braun about the fact that maybe Naval Officer could have a career in way, way out space and sail with a solar wind panel about the size of four or five football fields, and eventually the acceleration or the ch slight change in velocity would uh, cause you to move about. A colleague of mine has just invented a, a micro-balance that uses light pressure to zero it. pushes on his light. Setting up a 10 foot uh, experiment uh, now positioned uh, by Ed Mitchell. S band antenna that uh, will improve the, should improve the uh, reception a little bit, although it's quite good at the time. And it also serves as the uh, continuing antenna then for the uh, 
scientific station that they will set up on the moon, uh, which will last for well over a year. Uh, the nuclear powered, we'll see them set up the nuclear power station very shortly. One of the interesting things I've noticing here, the first time I, we had a very good picture from the moon is the dust flying about and the way the men are hopping. And I recall some of the uninformed, at least, or people who are skeptics, thinking that these were all pictures taken on Earth of people on the moon. It's very difficult to move that way, and it's also impossible to make dust move that way. Roger, Ed. switching transmissions over to that uh, erectable antenna they're putting up now and uh, setting up the laser reflector and which permits uh, the laser beams exact measurements of the distance from the moon and the wobble of the moon and the earth. CBS News color coverage today's walk on the moon will continue in a moment. color pictures from the moon uh, you're first time. Driving more at uh, force penetration and uh, did you meet any rocks or anything like that? This is capsule communicator Bruce and Canvas. I didn't to run any kind of an experiment. Roger, I copy. Forcing the legs down, I just... Mitchell had said he expected to talk all the way on the Shepard walk. has uh, positioned the antenna legs into the lunar surface. But uh, we're not hearing uh, exactly a running line of patter from him. He was brilliant, I thought, in describing the moon from the landed craft. Looks more like a kangaroo. <laughs> now you're too far away. <laughs> three and a quarter, three and three quarters pounds of uh, pure oxygen, which inflates the suit to preserve an environment that they can breathe in. Uh, that was one of my specialties in the old days with developing those, but there's the antenna deploying. You're safe down to about two and a half pounds and you start getting a little trouble breathing. But the higher the pressure, the stiffer the suit. Okay, lower it on down. Okay. Go ahead. I'm a little trouble opening up that antenna. It supposed to unfold so it's like a parasol, upside down parasol. Yeah. There it is. All kinds of freebies in today's simulation. Roger, we got the boys in the back room working overtime. <laughs> The antenna pops out like an upside down umbrella. What I was referring to, the freebies, is that they probably had to do this once before simulating it to uh, help deploy that antenna. Tilt it over. Okay.
looking at that antenna, you must realize we are up from them. <laughs> that antenna directly should be looking at Earth. The parabola, the actual point above them it should be the waveguide that uh, brings us okay, signal. Okay, there's Earth, way up there. Yeah. I mean, under Earth. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to 